A solar concentrator combined with a solar cell is something like you may have seen with a large mirror, for example, that is used to track the sun and collect the sun, sun's light and then focus that down on a very small solar cell. So the solar cell gets an awful lot of light concentrated on it and it generates a lot of electricity, but it's still only a very small thing. Most of the area is taken up by the optical collector that's the concentrator. What we've done in this work is we've, we've built a solar concentrator that doesn't need to track the sun. It's a flat piece of glass that has dye on top of it. The light comes in, it hits the dye, it's absorbed by the dye, and then the dye re-emits that light at a longer wavelength. But because it's re-emitting the light from inside this piece of glass, essentially, the light is trapped in the glass and is guided to the edges of the glass and is collected around the edges. So this gives us a very high so-called concentration factor, which means that essentially we, we have collect light over a very large area, but we only need a very small area of solar cells around the edges to generate the electricity. So what we've done is we've taken that idea and we've made it more efficient. Previously, the problems with these kinds of devices was that not enough photons got to the edges of the glass. They were absorbed before they got to the edge. And so we took an idea from lasers, uh, which is known as a four-level system, and we made the, the, the collector a lot more transparent to its own emitted light. We think that the combination of a solar concentrator and a conventional solar cell will enable you to get twice as much power from the system, which means a couple of things. One, you could just use twice as much power, and the other thing is you could use half as much area on your roof. For example, if you were, had a solar cell system on your roof, you wouldn't have, to be, wouldn't have to be as big as it was before. So we think these are going to be fairly inexpensive to make. The, the dye that you're looking at here, for example, is a very common car paint, and it's extremely inexpensive. And with regard to manufacturing it, it should be fairly easy to make because it's very tolerant of defects. So unlike a regular solar cell where if there's a defect somewhere on the cell, you'll have a short circuit and you can have a lot of problems because of that. Here, if there's a few defects here, you're going to lose a little bit of light, but it won't crash the whole panel. So we think this can be made very inexpensively with low-cost coating processes.